If you love creating in polymer clay, but you ever were into scrapbooking, card making, or other paper crafts, you may have accumulated a bunch of supplies that you didn't realize you can use with your polymer clay. Hi there, Sandy here. Thank you so much for watching this class. Today I have for you a whole bunch of ideas and explorations for how you can use your stamps and inks that were from paper crafting in some really beautiful polymer clay projects. So this in front of me is just a fraction of the rubber stamp and ink collection that I gathered together while I was doing scrapbooking. I wish I could still do it, but there's only so much time. And rather than getting rid of all of it, when I started doing polymer clay, I realized there's a lot you can do with it, but there's a lot I've left unexplored. So today I'm going to show you a few ways that you can use these things to make really interesting, unique polymer clay projects. So here are a few basics about using inks with rubber stamps on polymer clay. First of all, I have found just in the inks that I have that they will all be permanent after baking. It doesn't matter if it's a permanent ink like stays on, which should be before or after baking, or chalk ink or archival ink or any of the inks I tried, dye ink, pigment ink, after baking, they're all permanent. None of them came off, none of them have rubbed off after baking. So that's fantastic to know. Another thing that's great is you don't have to use any kind of release. The inks act as a release. So that's one less step. You can see in these examples here that you can do this technique as tight and controlled and detailed as you want, or you can do it really loose. So I'll show you both of those and a few things in between. If you have word sets like these, these are terrific to make anything. Word jewelry is very popular these days and you can use these, add a few of your other stamps. You can make something unique and meaningful to you. Now here I've got some white polymer clay that I rolled out on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. Now this sheet looks pretty white. But if you were to compare it with some white straight out of the package, you would see that it isn't as white. And that's because any mistakes that I've made in the stamping, or not mistakes, but just things I wasn't happy with, I just went ahead and wiped off the excess from the top and then rolled it back into the clay. And it still looks pretty white, except for maybe, well, I got a couple specks down there. Here's a cute little set. Let's play with this and see what we can come up with. There's a couple things you need to know about using rubber stamps on polymer clay. I had to break some bad habits. One of my habits is that I tend to really smush. Oh, yeah, like that. <laughs> Maybe not quite that bad. <laughs> but I tend to really smush, 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 smush. And then when I tap it on the paper, hope for the best. You can't do that with polymer clay because you're pressing into the clay. You're making an impression and getting ink on it. So you have to do your inking a little bit more carefully. For your stamps, you really do need some kind of mount. So either stamps that are already wood mounted or cling stamps that get mounted onto an acrylic block. You could take an unmounted stamp and press it with your fingers, but you're going to have a really hard time doing a nice job and getting it tidy. Now, there were a couple of bad habits I had to break when I started doing the inking with stamps on the clay. I would tend to really squash my stamp into the stamp pad. I mean, really squish and rock because when you're tapping it onto your paper, the, the stamp is going to stay above the paper, but when you're pressing it into clay, you're pressing it in and you're making an impression. So you can't have any ink. Like here, can you see I got ink on that? I got ink on the edge of that ribbon. That's gonna show on your polymer clay and you don't want that. 
So you want to start out with a nice clean stamp, make sure all of the edges are free of ink. And then what you want to do is tap, tap, tap. No pushing, squishing, just tap, tap, tap. So I'm not trying to hold this view, just tapping, no squashing, that's all. And you can do that as much as you feel you need. You can kind of hold it in the light and see if all the areas of the stamp are wet and shiny. That means they have ink on them. Then we'll press it into the clay where you want it. Press straight down and stop. No rocking like I often do, again, when I'm stamping on paper. And that came out pretty nice. Not perfect. It looks like I could have inked better. You have raised areas, so you have a texture, and then you also have your pictorial element, the flowers. Now you could manage this a few different ways. We could do it really loose, like I did with these pieces. Maybe I'll use some of these little chalk inks. And what I have here is a dish of pom-poms. They're just little tiny one-half inch pom-poms and they make really great applicators. Go ahead and grab them with an alligator clip. I actually use this alligator clip to help me put on bracelets. It holds one end of the chain and then I can get the other end around. But it works as a great tool for holding on to these little pom-poms for a very loose application of ink. So let's say I wanted to color this rose in the center here red. I can just do this. Pounce, pounce. Now in that case, it looks like I probably should have used a darker color to begin with because it's really covering it up. And this is what I meant by just rolling it up. So if I just wipe off the whole thing, and actually that's another option. Um, you can just wipe it back and maybe keep working. All right, I did re-roll that. Um, and yeah, I rolled all that ink in and it still looks pretty white. I'm sure there's a limit to where you could, how far you could take that. So let's try this again with maybe a color that's going to show up better. So we'll try, uh, this will look good, green. And knowing which colors are going to look good on the clay, ugh, Okay. It's kind of an experiment. You just have to test it and see. So once again, tap, tap, tap. There you can you see that? It's all shiny. Well, that's better, but as you can see, my center bit with the rose didn't come out so great. So here is one place we can come in and fix. I've got a little tiny brush for miniatures, and I just kind of wiped it across my ink pad. Now, it did impress the lines, it just that rose didn't get inked for some reason. Well, I'm going to take my brush and just touch it up until I'm happy with the way it looks. In fact, where's that? Take a look at it. And you can do something like this to any of your stamps. You can add things maybe that you wished were there, or just add to it, add to the artwork in the stamp if you uh, wanted something more. You can also mask off areas so they don't get ink, but of course they will all impress. There, and who would ever know, except you who watched this with me, that that really didn't ink properly to begin with. And what I mean by masking off, is let's say you wanted these flowers but you didn't want these stems. You could take a little bit of like a post-it note 
and stick it on there, cover up the part that you don't want to ink, ink it up, and then when you stamp, that part won't have ink. Again, it will emboss and create an impression, but it won't ink. So you could go back in with a different color ink with a brush or, or something of the sort. So now back to what I was doing before with the red ink. Let's see if this works a little bit better. And maybe I'll just have a lighter touch. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And maybe I'll just kind of very loosely get these little flowers over here. Can you see what I mean by very loose? Because you're using the pom-pom, you're not going to get a real detailed look, but it's kind of a pretty soft look. And you can go in with as many colors as you want. And you could actually get more detailed if you bought, uh, I think they make the little tiny pom-poms. So, depending on your tolerance for looseness, you could definitely, um, get tighter with this and I'll show you in a minute but you can probably guess it by what I've shown you already a way to get even tighter do remember to try to cover up your ink pads whenever you're not using them leave them covered as much of the time as you can this is just a different shade of green that I stamped with to kind of fill in greens. Oh, I like that. There's the blue. And those little blue flowers. Not the blue now. <laughs> and there you go. You can go on and on and have as much fun with this as you like. When you're done, you can use cutters. I love these Pateco nested cut cutters because I have so many size possibilities. Maybe I'll do a circle with this one. I have the ovals and the circles, and it's so nice that the cutters cut that the sizes are all very close together. So you can really get pretty much whatever size you want. There. You can do so many things with this. This can these can just be pendants, ornaments, tags, whatever you like. Or you can use this technique to make a texture sheet and then apply that to something else. And this kind of loose approach is exactly what I did here with this stamp. I just stamped it in brown ink and then went over the pine needle greens with uh, some green. I think it would be really pretty to come in, maybe add some beads, maybe some red beads or something to just add a little spark of color. And these, you could make these into, like I said, jewelry, pendants, earrings, ornaments, gift tags. And I believe actually I cut both of these from, yeah, the same sheet, you can see. So I, I just stamped this once and got these two pieces out of it. You don't have to bake this flat. You can also add another layer of clay behind it, make it thicker, add borders. So many possibilities. But what if all that loosey-goosiness is totally not your vibe? I understand, believe me. Uh, I kind of prefer a more precise look. Uh, I like the loose, but something in me says, oh, that's so sloppy. So here, these are. this is a really cute little set of seasonal motifs. So let's do this one. And I think I'm going to try to get the black ink. And I think that black ink is totally dried up. So maybe not black. We'll do this green. I think I used the other green on the flowers. So we'll do this one because it's one of the darker colors I have. Again, no squishy, just tappy. <laughs> but then squishy straight down. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that. Okay. So a more precise application of the ink would involve, you might have guessed it from what I showed you earlier, these little brushes. And there will be links to as many of these as I can find in the accompanying materials. 
but you can really get very precise with it might be a little, I think I want a darker red. Let's see. That's magenta, but I think that might be better. And you can layer these. In fact, see the difference? There's the magenta by itself, and it looks a little different over the other color. Not hugely. But as artists, we're often going for the subtleties. Yeah, I kind of like the two layered. Well, that was a happy accident. Okay. Put them together. Little berries. And now I've got a dry bit of paper towel because I want to do something a little bit more subtle here. You'd be surprised how much ink you pick up just with a couple swipes across the ink pad. I don't want to color these in quite so solid. Here we go, I want it to be lighter. So I just brushed it, brushed it on the towel. You can't even tell anything. But then when you put it down, you can still see uh, your background and your lines, which I think looks nice. Yeah, I do kind of wish I had the black had worked. I think that would be better. It would be a bit more contrast. This is kind of turning into a green blob. Well, here's something else to try. I, it's funny, some of these ink pads you'll see have FC on them. I have a few of them like that. That stands for the Scrapbook Cupboard, which was a really sweet little scrapbook store near me. It was nice. But sadly, uh, the way as many local businesses are going these days, they went out of business. And when they went out, they had a sale where they gave you a bag for like 10 bucks, you could fill it, and I put in stamp pads and expensive things that I normally wouldn't buy. And this is something I've hardly ever used. That's kind of pretty. I've got um, kind of a bronzy look here. And I found stamping in the bronze on the white clay wasn't real successful. Well, I'll, I'll leave it to your imagination to play <coughs> and think of what you can do. You know, I thought these would be, oh, I'm squishing. See, that's my bad habit. So I gotta wipe this off and try that again. Although actually with this one where it's got a border, it might not, well, no, it would. If you're filling in the recesses with ink, then when you squish down into your clay, it's going to show. So you really do want to not squish and clean it out well. If, uh, if you've made a mess of it, you can bring it to the sink and scrub it with a nail brush and really get all the ink out of those recesses. It's amazing. It's been a few years and this is still nice and juicy. So I can see it's well inked. Let's see. Yeah, it's a pretty soft, subtle look on the white. Here's another thing that's kind of fun that you can do. If you ever worked in paper with inks, you may have tried some what's called direct-to-paper applications, where you actually take your ink pad right to your paper. And we can actually do that with the clay. So let's see if we can get a really fun edge on this. Kind of like, you know how you antique edges with like the the brown distress ink, the vintage photo, that's a color of distress ink. Again, this is a pretty soft, subtle look on that. But you can see where you can get that kind of aged look. Let's try, let's try the green. Just to kind of softly color your edges and uh, I'm going over the leaf on the leaves on purpose a little bit because remember the design is embossed in there Oop. Good. <laughs> oh there's another possibility how about imprints <laughs> yeah figure that out by mistake okay that might I might have overdone that just a little but that's okay take a back a little. So, <laughs> did I just make a total mess? Yes. 
<laughs> but you get the idea that you can just play with these all day long and get a more precise application. And that's what I did here with this. I stamped this, which I love this stamp. This was one dollar at Michael's in the, in the Michael's bins, you know, by the checkout. They're, they're one dollar and I have never regretted buying this. I've used it for so many things. It's just a great detailed stamp. This took a little while to do. I just went in and I used this color blue and did all of the uh, those little teardrops and then I did the outline with purple and I went in with other colors. I ended up not liking what I did in the center and so I went over it again with the blue which shows that you can actually go in once the ink is dry and layer these which is pretty cool. And I'll show you what I mean here. By the way, if you need to clean your stamps, if you're using any kind of uh, solvent ink, permanent ink, this is a great cleaner. This just stays on. I'm going to use it to clean my brush right now. I'll use it to clean my stamps when I'm all done. Let's see if I can get the brush kind of clean. Just test that. Make sure it's really blue, not blue and green. Yep. This in the center is actually just two layers of the blue. And out here, these are just one. So you can layer it up. And, ooh, now that's pretty. It'll lighten up a little as it dries. But you can get all kinds of effects. So yeah, this part took a while. This uh, very careful, detailed painting, but I just used my inks, and like I said, it didn't matter. I've got a whole mixture of different types of inks here, and it didn't matter. After it was baked, they are all permanent. None of them are rubbing off. But you will want to check. Do a test with your inks and make sure you may have the exception. <laughs> and I would hate for you to do a whole project and then find that it's rubbing off. So do make sure that you test that out. So you can just go in and, and have a lot of fun. Almost treat it like one of those, you know, coloring books <laughs> where you just go in and, and fill it with colors that make you happy. So a lot of different ways to experiment, try things. You know, you may say, oh, you messed that up, that's a fail. But I don't consider it a fail. I consider it an experiment. I learned something not to do. I you know, learned how that looks. I figured out something. So I don't consider any of it a fail. So I was thinking about those metallic inks that I really liked. I have, I have a couple of them. I've got this one, which I thought seemed so pretty, Platinum Planet. And this is uh, Mica Magic. And I thought they would be really pretty, but they didn't turn out so nice on the white clay. So I wondered how they would look on black clay. Let's try that. I've got this sweet little rose stamp. I have a couple blacks here. This is just solid black. And this one I've mixed in some, uh, I think, silver. I just love the sparkle that you get when you do that. I mean, it still reads as black. Well now, isn't that gorgeous? Oh boy, yeah, I'm glad I thought to try that. Very nice. And we can color that or not cut it out with a cutter. And let's see if we can do a direct to clay. <laughs> yeah, direct to clay. Uh, uh, direct to clay on the edges here a little more carefully than on that other one. Oh, that's pretty. Kind of gives it a... can color the edges of the clay and then also get a real pretty soft look. Of course, I'm mashing it with my finger and just made a mess of it. I probably should have let it dry first. That would have been smart. Although it's not going to dry the same as it will on paper. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's try that. Again. All right. I'm going to do this differently. <laughs> what if... I added this first. 
Of course, this isn't even a perfect piece of clay. I'm just playing around here, which is a really great way of making discoveries, of creating something that's your own, your own style, your own voice. If you just allow yourself time to play with no expectations of coming out with a finished project, you know, kind of go in with the expectation that you're going to ball it all up and put it back in your scrap bin when you're done. But you, this is The point of this is not to get something finished, but to play and experiment there. A friend of mine once told me, and I realized later that it's absolutely true, it's not what you can make, it's what you can fix. You know that you understand your medium and kind of know a little bit of what you're doing when you can fix things. <laughs> All right, let's try this other one now because that silver came out so pretty on the black because bronze snowflakes on the black background makes perfect sense. Let's try that. Now this, you'll notice, doesn't have an acrylic block. All right, I'm going to cheat. Here's my acrylic block. It's a ceramic block. <laughs> All right. And tap, tap, tap. And on this stamp, you can really see how well it's inked up or not. And that splodge right there isn't going to come through. I'm just doing this because I'm too lazy to... Well, that's pretty if I had a better impression. Ooh, I like that. Let's try that again. I like the bronze snowflake on the black sparkly background. It kind of it's like a magical wintry sky. So, like I said, this is not ideal. Well, let me show you what happens if you don't have um, a block for these kinds of unmounted stamps. You do it with your fingers. And you kind of get a mess. You don't get a deep impression in the middle, although I do have a nice stamping, but you don't get the impression, which looks really great here. And it's a little blurred and double vision-y. Th that's just to show you it is important to have your stamp mounted. I went and got an acrylic block for this. No squishy. This is me talking to me because, it, it, like I said, it really is a bad habit I have of squishying. Straight down, straight up. That is so pretty. Ooh, I like that. So many things you could do with that. You know, you don't have to cut it out with a perfect circle. You don't have to cut out the whole thing. In fact, if there's a part that doesn't come out good, you could do something like this. Maybe here's that smaller one. Is there one? Yeah, this one. Like that. That is so pretty. And then you can add other things with it. If you're a polymer clay artist, you know how to make striped borders, borders with patterns. You can bake this over a curved form, let the ink dry. Although again, it's not gonna soak up. The clay is not going to soak up the ink like a piece of paper would. So it may not really completely dry until you heat set it and some may not then. You really do need to test them. Nothing is wasted. It all is just changed or used in new and different ways. I have one more thing for you to consider playing with. This is ultralight polymer clay. It's kind of got the texture of a marshmallow without the stickiness, and it doesn't really roll through the pasta machine all that nicely because it's not as sticky as other polymer clay. And you have to have a little stick. It has to kind of stick to the rollers 
in order for it to roll out. Oh, I'm getting my inkiness all over it. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. All right, we'll put that on the inside. So you can use this. You can use that to your advantage, though, because it's very soft and has these real soft edges. So instead of trying to get a perfectly smooth sheet, embrace that fact that you're not going to. Roll yourself a ball. This is maybe a little bigger than I need, but we'll see. Make sure to keep rolling until you don't have any more creases or wrinkles or seams. You want just a nice smooth ball. I'm going to flatten it a little. And then I'll grab one more uh, stamp. Let's see. How about that? This is a Martha Stewart set, which is probably no longer being made. I bought it years ago on clearance, I think. But I'm sure you can find butterfly stamps. Let's see. What about this one? This is a dye ink. All right, we'll give it a try. And again, like with the snowflake, maybe just off center a little bit. Press that in. Well, that's pretty. And the only issue I have with this is that you can see this outline that is this edge where the rubber stamp was cut. Now, if I had clean fingers, <laughs> I might... Oh, well, I'll just go for it if I make a mess of it. With a nice clean finger, you can actually go in with this ultralight. Just smooths beautifully just because of its consistency. And ever so gently smooth that out. Yeah, you can see why clean fingers are preferable. And isn't that beautiful? You can come in with your pouncer or your brush and add more color over the top. And have again a lovely ornament use this to decorate something else. I hope that these ideas have given you some inspiration and a jumping off point for your own creativity.